Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled, Letting an Unqualified Pilot Fly Can and Did End a Disaster, United Airlines Flight 2885 Crash at Detroit in 1983. Now, this was a cargo flight that had started in Cleveland and was going to Los Angeles with a stop over in Detroit. And it was a night takeoff, and the NTSB attributed the accident to pilot error, but there's, there's a lot more to the story than simply pilot error. I was hired in 1979, and I stayed on a year before I was furloughed due to economic considerations for four and a half years. This crash occurred essentially right in the middle of my furlough, and, and it really didn't get a whole lot of attention on the press, probably because, and I hate to say it, it only, it only killed three people. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a passenger flight. But it was endemic of a practice that was fairly common place back then. See, a lot of the people uh, had stagnated in their seat position. There were many uh, second officers in the 727, for example, that were second officers for 17 years. In fact, when I was hired and after I came back from furlough, um, I was flying engineer and, of course, the engineers moved up to co-pilot and the captain would turn around and say, hey, are we good to go up, you know, to... Uh, 29,000 feet or 30,000 feet or whatever. And I would have to get out my books to look it up. And the, the, yeah, the co-pilot would try to be nice, but he'd kind of lean over the cab and say, yeah, we're good because they had done it so much. And they had it memorized. And I would kind of joke and I go, yeah, we're good. And we'd all laugh, you know, but, uh, they had been in the seat so long that, um, they had it memorized. Well, part of the problem was though, when you set as an engineer and fly sideways, you really lose your skills. And a lot of the captains were really trying to help the guys out. So if you'd get a ferry flight or you'd get a, um, you know, a cargo flight, um, they would sometimes let uh, the engineer get a little bit of stick time to try to, to, try to keep them in, uh, you know, keep their skills up. Now, back when I was flying for that first year, I had a lot of captains tell me, you know, about how everything was so great in the good old days and, and, you know, things were terrible now, but, you know, just, just absolutely wonderful in the good old days. And I finally, you know, I'm on probation that first year, but I finally got the courage to say to the captain, I said, well, captain, okay. But for me as a new hire, these are my good old days. And of course you can just imagine these people are sitting there thinking, boy, flying is so wonderful. How luxurious will it be in 50 years? Yeah. You know, the answer to that story. But let's get back to the DC-8 freighter. Now, here's a picture of the DC-8 cockpit, and anybody familiar with this uh, knows there's a lot of, uh, you see, levers there for cross-feed and fuel and stuff like that, and they're, uh, they called this Steamboat Willie, the old, uh, um, you know, cartoon reference there, because everything was uh, uh, fairly mechanical on this aircraft, and um, I never got a chance to fly it, but people who did absolutely uh, love the aircraft. And this engineer... Uh, who was, uh, who was on this flight. And I, I am sure the captain didn't know his history. Um, I would hope not, but he tried to upgrade as a DC eight co-pilot. And after two months, which is almost twice the length of normal training, um, he, uh, he was basically told, Hey, you can't do it. So he went back to be engineer. Well, he took another bit. He tried to be a 737 co-pilot and that didn't work either. And what the company would do at the time, and of course we had uh, people who were professional engineers, flight engineers, and they basically said, you know, uh, if you want to continue working for this airline, you're going to have to basically sign an agreement that you're never going to try to upgrade again. You're going to be a uh, perennial second officer. You know, don't, don't try to be co-pilot. We, we tried to do it twice and, it, you know, we're just wasting money here and, and you don't have the ability. So, this guy's sitting back there and the captain decides to be a nice guy and gives him, uh, offers him the night takeoff out of Detroit. Well, unfortunately, the trim uh, had still been set quite a bit nose up, seven and a half units nose up. And what happened is they, they took off and this is night. And of course, you know, at night, um, you don't have as good a visual references. And uh, because of the trim setting, the aircraft pitched up abruptly and uh, it probably had some disturbance to the airflow of the engines because some people reported seeing uh, uh, compressor stalls out of the engine. The thing rolled over and it crashed. 
This is a picture of the actual aircraft uh, that did crash. We had uh, dedicated uh, freight liners. Well, as I mentioned, this had kind of been a uh, practice that, um, you know, people look the other way at. Uh, but after, after this accident, I mean, it they were good intentions, um, but it was definitely against the rules. Things were different back then. It was definitely against the rules. And the VP of flight operations came out and said, if any captain ever lets a second officer fly again, you're fired right now. So that was the end of that. It, it, uh, it was nothing I ever did. And that's not a, you know, trying to, you know, uh, say I didn't have part of this, you know, but. Uh, what happened is you, back then you typically flew a month with a crew and you got to know the crew. And after you did that and they had an opportunity, if you had a ferry flight or a freighter flight, they'd say, Hey, you know, and give you a, give you a t little time in the seat. I was on reserve that entire time. So I never flew with a crew more than once a month. So we never got that cordial where anybody thought to offer it to me. Um, so that never happened and it's probably good. It, it, it's a rule violation anyway, and it's something I wouldn't have done in probation. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, that is a story, the rest of the story, if you want to put it that way, of, uh, this particular accident back in 1983. Thanks for watching.